particularly what happens when probabilities are continuous and you don't have, for example, the probability of a coin being heads or tails or something finite, like the probability of a color being blue, red, pink, or orange, right? But you have probabilities such as what is the probability that the temperature of today is 35 degrees? Well, it could be 35.02567 degrees. What's the probability of that? Well, it is impossible to know. Uh, well, it's not. Well, it is impossible to know the probability of all possibilities of temperature giving a day, right? So, for example, what's the probability of the temperature at noon being some number? Well, it's very hard to tell. Moreover, the probability of any particular number might be actually zero because if you think about it, what's the probability that the temperature at noon be 32.062787552262 degrees, for example? A, a ridiculous number, right? The probability of that being that of one day being that temperature and the next day variating, you know, on the tenth decimal. That's that's how it's always going to be. So, what's the probability of having a temperature at noon be exactly this one really complicated number? Well, it's probably zero, right? Instead, what we do is we say, well, what's the probability of say when we say what's the probability of um, of the noon temperature being 35 degrees, what we're actually saying is what's the probability that it is in some range very close to 35 degrees. So what's the probability that, it, that the temperature is 34.5 or greater up to 35.4 or lower, right? So what's the probability that the temperature is within a range that we can call 35, right? So if it's 35.0325, we don't really care. We still call that 35. So what we're really doing when probabilities are continuous, right? When probabilities are continuous is to find the probability that the number for the variable falls within a small region. And we can say, you know, starts at x and then divided by the width of the region. So that's basically the gradient, right? Now, for example, we call the little region B dx, right? Then we want to know what is the probability of a variable falling in a range of a given number and that given number plus something tiny, right? Divided by that, uh, by that difference. That is basically a gradient. And that probability then, um, that probability approximates to as, as the, as the um, range becomes smaller and smaller, that probability follows this limit. Now, what we do though is that when we're looking about gradients, right, for continuous variables, some variables are what we call distributed differently. So for example, salaries are distributed such that most uh, salaries or most people make a certain amount of money and very few people make incredible amounts of money, right? So that distribution has most people, most uh, a salary of a median salary with a lot of people and then an unmediated salary with very few people. On the other hand, we have distributions such as height, where we have some people that are short, some people that are very tall, but most people are in the middle, right? So these distributions have different shapes. Uh, some distributions are either uniform distribution, so that is uh, a distribution where every possible value has equal probability, right? So for example, uniform between 55 Fahrenheit and 85 Fahrenheit. That's a distribution of every temperature between 55 and 85 having equal probability. Or we can have a normal distribution where we give it, what's the mean? What's the most common value? Give or take a few, um, this is like a range, or give or take a few points, right? So for example, if, if we're talking about height, we would say uh, that in the United States, height has a normal distribution with a mean of 172 centimeters or 77 centimeters and give or take, you know, five or six centimeters. That's, this is called the standard deviation. So every case will have a probability distribution, which is basically an equation that gets at the heart of finding the probability for a range of a continuous variable. Here's the intuition of that, of that equation. <clears throat> For example, we're going to do the following. We're going to say that 
we're going to look at the temperature, right? And we want to know the probability of the temperature being in a very small range, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, let's say that we're going to graph the temperature for many days, but I am going to, and I'm going to uh, represent the temperatures in bins or segments of two degrees. So I'm going to have 58, uh, 60, 62, 64 in Fahrenheit. So I will track how many days the temperature fell in that little range of two degrees. Okay. In the graph that I'm going to show you, the x-axis is the temperature and the y-axis is the frequency. Okay. Now, as um, uh, the y-axis will be frequency, and I will measure it from zero to one, so it, it resembles probability. So let's look at what happens when I vary the bin size. So first I have a bin size of 2. So this is 55 degrees, it goes to 57, to 59, to 61, and so on and so forth. And I track the number of days. Of all the days, what proportion of those days fell in that range? So for example, between 75 and 77, that was most days fell into this proportion. However, if I then make the, si the bin size smaller, so 0 0.8 degrees, so between 55 and uh, 50 uh, and 0 0.8 from that is 63. So I mean uh, 58. So if here I have 55 and then I have I'm sorry 0 0.8 degrees, so that's 55.8. Then this here is 55.8 is 56.6 .6, and so on and so forth in increments of 0 0.8 degrees. Then I see that there's some here it was like a bunch of buildings. Here's a bunch of buildings, but there's some continuity to the sum of them. And if I make the bin smaller and smaller and smaller every time, I will get something close to just a point for every for every um, temperature. And that will describe a line. And if it describes a line, we can have an equation to represent the line. Okay? And the probability will then become the area under the curve. So for example, if I want the probability of of uh, days having between 60 and 70 degrees, it will be the area behind, the area under the curve between 60 and 70. Because this curve is an equation, I can know the area under the curve using something called integral. However, computers do, do this very easy for us, and there's a bunch of uh, ways to get the area under the curve, including tables in the back of statistics books, or simply computers, or Excel, or any, any computer statistical program, even online. And that is how the basics of continuous variable probabilities.